Good Thursday morning, my friends. I'm Pastor Ben Hayes from First Baptist Church, Dadeville, Alabama, bringing you our thought for the day on this Thursday, my final day in Anaheim, Anaheim California. I'll be heading to the airport momentarily, uh, getting ready for my flight uh, later today. Be in late this evening, but uh, we're excited about being home. I'm excited about being home, but it's good to see you today. Thank you, Brother Charlie, for the good work you did last night. Heard all about it. I uh, didn't have a chance to watch it, but I did hear about it, and I'm so thankful for you and your ministry at First Baptist. But if you have your Bibles today, turn with me to 1 Thessalonians chapter 3 as we continue to look at this incredible passage because as I said yesterday, Paul was so very concerned about his people. And that's the way uh, a good pastor is. He's, he's always concerned about his people, especially when uh, things are not going well. And his concern was that they were going to turn their backs on Jesus and he didn't want that to happen. And uh, remember he told us in, in verse 3 that we were appointed to this. We are appointed to, to suffer. We are appointed to persecution. We're appointed for people to misunderstand us, to ridicule us, to uh, try to uh, push us in ways that, that we don't want to go. And uh, he, he continues this in verse 4. He says, For in fact, we told you before when we were with you that we would suffer tribulation just as it happened, and you know. How did they know? Because they were going through it. They were suffering the persecution, the, the, the tribulation. Uh, there's no good teacher, uh, no better teacher than uh, experience. And that's what they were having. They were experiencing the, the tribulation that uh, Paul had told them were coming. And he says, for this reason, when I could no longer endure it, I sent to know your faith, lest by some means the tempter had tempted you and our labor might be in vain. There are a couple of issues here that I, I want to delve into, and it may, may uh, take us a little while to, to get there, but... It's, it's one of those incredible things that we, we tend to think about. As Baptists, we believe once saved, always saved. Now, what does that mean? That means at the moment that you realize your need for a, for a Savior, that you are a sinner headed for hell, and you cry out to the Father in uh, repentance, asking for forgiveness, and allowing Jesus to come into your life as your Lord and Savior, uh, believing that he died on the cross to provide for you that which you needed desperately, to uh, have that forgiveness of sin. Once you have that moment when you come into that relationship with, with God the Father through faith in Jesus Christ, you are saved for eternity. And Jesus said it best in John 17, nothing can pluck us out of his hand uh, because that is how secure we are in our relationship with God. Now, understand, God's creator of the universe. He made the rules. This is, this is the rule he set up. And we can uh, have that peace of mind knowing that we rest in, in his hand. But here's the thing. Jesus also made a statement. He said, not all who say, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven. Now, what's he talking about there? Well, there are lots of people that give lip service to the gospel. They say, yeah, I believe. Yes, I'm surrendered. Yes, I want to go to heaven when I die. The issue is not what we say with our mouths. The issue is what we believe in our hearts what we confess with our mouths and how we live our lives to that, that demonstrates the fact that we have been changed. Now, here's, here's the thing. If these Thessalonian believers were truly believers, they would never lose their salvation. That's not a question here. Uh, some of them may not have been true believers. Even the Apostle Paul uh, probably had some of those. Jesus did. He had Judas. But here's the, the thing. There are times when even believers begin to doubt. There are times when even believers tend to withdraw. Now, I, I'm a firm believer that uh, as, as the sons and daughters of God, when those moments of tribulation, when those moments of persecution come, that God is going to give us the grace to stand if we trust in him. It's like all the, the great martyrs of the faith that you read about who sang hymns as uh, they were being burned at the stake. Um, you know, those are the, the kinds of things that God does for his people when we trust in him. But there are those who fear those, those moments of persecution, and uh, they don't know what they're going to do because they doubt. And Paul wanted to be sure that these new believers had everything that they needed to fight this spiritual battle because it is a spiritual battle. It's not physical. It's spiritual. It is a matter of, of knowing that uh, the enemy is trying to sift us like he did Peter, and uh, that, uh, as Jesus promised even Peter, that uh, he will call him back. 
And so that's the key here. He says, lest by some means the tempter had tempted you and our labor might be in vain. Paul's saying all that work we did, that it, it was of, of nothing because these people turned their backs. Now the good news is, and we'll find out soon, that uh, these Thessalonian believers stood strong. They loved Paul and they continued to, to serve God. And that's what I want you to do. Continue to serve God no matter what. Know that I love you. Know that I look forward to being back here tomorrow morning. And uh, be blessed.